Name a Karasno starting member, and chances are you can think of multiple big scenes they've had. Huge game saving or winning moments, brilliant bits of character development, or just pure hype. But there's one player that doesn't really apply to. Sure, he has his moments, but compared to these huge scenes with flashbacks, multiple minutes of build up, and even their own unique soundtracks, he doesn't really have anything like that. And that's the captain, Daichi. But there's actually a lot more to say about him than it first seems. His story goes a lot deeper than I realized the first time I watched IQ, and it's one I could have gone very differently if it wasn't for his incredible mental strength. Also, it's one you'll notice has a lot of similarities with Hinata's. A lot. Firstly, he too lacked a real team that shared his crazy love for the game. Sure, unlike Hinata, he did at least have one to train with, but they weren't really interested in it. Besides him, no one on his team ever believed there was any chance of winning. His final game in high school also ends with a crushing defeat, leaving him frustrated, but above all, wanting to play more volleyball. Having seen Karasno on TV, he too wanted to play for them. However, when Daichi arrives with the other third years, he's met with a completely different Karasuno. The wingless crows don't even seem to be able to walk, let alone fly. With no coach, a disinterested team, and their contacts with other schools completely lost. It would have been all too easy to just give in to the despair, because this is seemingly Karasuno's lowest point. Even if he got his fellow first year to be as hyped up as he was, you can't play volleyball with three players. But I think Daichi's experience when he was younger taught him something very, very valuable. Because no matter how hopeless it may seem or how disinterested people are, once they lose at the end of the tournament, they're frustrated, incredibly frustrated. We see it from multiple teams in the same episode, we find out about Daichi's backstory. They stand on the court and realize they can't suddenly become a strong team. They wish they practiced more, they wish they took it more seriously, they wish they got to play more volleyball. Even if it doesn't seem like there's an opportunity right now, you'll regret not preparing for it when it does arrive. And so he not only trains hard, he trains after hours. He coaches his fellow first years, finds a manager, does everything he possibly can, going above and beyond every single day, despite how meaningless it seems. He knows nothing will come of it for at least this year, but he still does it every single day without fail. And some of that energy did carry over a little to his upperclassmen, who get a little bit pumped up at least, but it was too little, far too late. Krasno lost by eight points in the second round to a team we never hear of again, so presumably weren't that good themselves. And it's now the third years finally feel the regret of it all. Far, far too late. And his former captain leaves him with those words that define Daichi's and many other characters' journeys. There's a chance Krasno may never get stronger, and if it does, it will probably be years from now. But if that chance appears, you'd better grab it. It's not too uncommon to hear people worry about, oh, what if I spend years doing this and it wouldn't work out? Wouldn't that be a waste of time? But not doing it, not preparing and not practicing will feel like far more of a waste of time. And I've mentioned how Hinata and Daichi stories have a lot of parallels. Both had to, with absolutely no guarantee of anything coming of it, create an opportunity for themselves that otherwise wouldn't exist. Hinata had to join his ball boy arc, and Daichi had to from day one at Karasuno. He had to do everything he could to improve himself as much as possible, so that if the new members of next year, or the following year, turn out to be strong, he'd be able to grab that opportunity. And of course, as we know, in both years, they got some great members. And it's because of Daichi's perseverance that, when Hinata joins Karasuno, it's very different from when Daichi joined. He doesn't walk into a team disinterested and hopeless. He walks into a team that's full of fire, that's ready to give nationals everything they have. It was a real reminder for me that if you don't like the mood of your environment, your work, your house, maybe your team as well, the way you act can have a real knock-on effect. It can take a long time, but if you're more positive, if you're more ambitious, slowly but surely, others around you will want to match that because they'll just feel awkward not doing so and have probably been wanting to be that way anyway, but just felt awkward being the only one. 
And imagine if Daichi hadn't been so dedicated and so ambitious. Suga and Asahi likely wouldn't have matched that energy, certainly not to the same extent. And then who knows if Tanaka and Nishinoya would have. It certainly wouldn't have reached a level that could inspire Tsukushima and Yamaguchi. Daichi started something incredible, and these two joining was such a switch that suddenly all that pointless practice and worthless optimism turned into something very, very worthwhile. And it's funny how that happens that all that effort that felt so hopeless and was probably almost sort of looked down on and sneered at by others, then you hit a certain level, a certain event, and it's like a switch is flicked and you become immeasurably grateful for it. It's all finally paid off. Their strong first and second years won't be let down by their third years because they've ensured that they're strong too. Karasno is finally strong again and they couldn't have asked for a better captain to lead them. Brilliant people skills of knowing when to step in and when not to. Even when others' initial reaction is to step in, he handled the difficult start of Hinato and Kagema perfectly and is a constant reassuring voice that constantly lives his team spirits and calms players down without ever feeling fake or forced. And above all, he's the player who the majority of the time has to handle the most stressful situations. The pressure of the winning point often goes to Hinata, and there's plenty of pressure there, of course. But if he misses, well, the game carries on. But on the occasions where Kirasuno has been one point off defeat, usually with the opponent's top server holding the ball, there's no room for error. And most of the time, the responsibility naturally falls to Daichi to handle it, and he's never once let his team down. Even when it's just a set point, the pressure must be immense. Yet even against the likes of Oikawa, not once has Daichi let his team down. Of course, being human, he does miss the occasional receive, but not once has he missed one when it really counts. He's taken the brunt of their strongest opponents, strongest weapons, and always managed to survive them, much to his opponent's annoyance. He's a foundation that holds the whole team together, and now his vision that he fought for for years is finally happening. And he deserves every second of it, because none of this would have happened had he not been so serious about his first year. And the crazy part is, he was willing to give that all up for the good of the team. Following their defeat to Albert Josai, the Fergies now have to decide if they'll play in the spring tournament or not. And in spite of how long he's waited for this, now that that chance is finally in his hands and he has a team strong enough to potentially make it to nationals, he's willing to give that up to let the first and second years develop. I don't actually think it would have helped them if he had stood down because there is no way they would have gone as far as they did without him. With how close the Albert Josai match was, Losing Daichi would have definitely resulted in them losing that game, which then would have meant they wouldn't have had the development they got in the Shiratori's Hour and Inarazaki games. But either way, just the fact that he was willing to do that, he was willing to do what he thought would help the team after waiting so long for this, really shows what a great guy and captain he is. Thankfully, Sugawara talks him out of it, but even so, he has the humility to realize that whilst he started this crazy chain reaction, it's not just him that has this vision, and it's not just him that contributes to it either. But regardless, even though he never really gets the credit for it, in my eyes, Daichi's the man who started Karasuna's Reba, and embodies one of my favorite ideas from Haikyuu, that even when it seems like there's no point, as though nothing is happening, even though you're putting the work in, one day, something will happen to make all of it worthwhile, but only if you keep going. Thank you very much for watching. I've got plenty of other Haikyuu videos, so I'll put the playlist on screen for you. But let me know who else you want to see below. Have a great day and see you again soon.